Hey everybody, I know you're probably asking yourself, another video about Revolver? Well, yes, ever since the Revolver Super Deluxe Edition came out this last year, I have been obsessed with Revolver. I've been deep diving into many, many different um, just uh, backstories and aspects of the recording of Revolver. And in today's video, I wanted to make a video about the, specifically about the tape loops from Tomorrow Never Knows. Tomorrow Never Knows, of course, is the last song on side two of Revolver. And it famously uses these tape loops. And it was the first time really in um, a modern rock or pop song that a band had used uh, th this idea of using tape loops as a type of sonic texture, I guess is what, what, what you would call it. And the Beatles were, of course, major innovators in so many ways with so many recording techniques. And tape loops were uh, definitely one of the recording techniques that the Beatles used quite a lot. Not too much, but they did use it and to great effect. And never more so than in Tomorrow Never Knows. And what I want to do in this video is talk about how they recorded these tape loops and the machines they used uh, at their own homes to record these tape loops that they then brought into EMI Abbey Road Studios uh, to then put onto the song Tomorrow Never Knows. So first off, let's talk about these home recording machines that, that they each of them had. Now, from all my research, I can definitely say that Paul had one of these machines, John had one, uh, and I'm pretty sure George had one as well, but I can't confirm that. And I would venture to guess that Ringo probably also had one as well. But I can definitely confirm that Paul and John both uh, had these recorders. And the reason I can confirm that is because Paul has openly talked about uh, this particular machine. Uh, John talked about it as well. Paul has talked about uh, helping John set up his home studio as well. So what is this machine that I'm referring to here? So the recording machine that uh, Paul and John had uh, in the 60s available to themselves is a machine, and I have some notes here. By the way, let me make a quick disclaimer. Uh, I don't claim to be uh, an expert when it comes to recording gear from the 1960s or anything like that. I've just done some research and with my uh, obsession with the Beatles along the way, I've picked up some of these little bits of uh, information. So here we go. So the machine that Paul and John had uh, at, their, at, their, at their homes uh, at the, around this time in 19, mid 1960s, it's a machine called a Brunel MK5. And this machine, I'll show you a picture of it right here. Uh, this was online. Online, I found some kind of different information, but I think it came out in 1958 or 1959, around that time period. Uh, and this is a machine that um, it's really just meant to record, record just simple home recordings. It really wasn't created to uh, have like overdubs or anything like that, or have multiple tracks. That being said, of course, Paul famously talks about with this machine how you could remove a certain part of it. And I believe the part is to the eraser head. Uh, I could be wrong, but he removes a certain part of it. And when you remove that certain part, it enables you to record one thing on the tape recorder and then rewind back to it, record again over the top of it, and it would keep what you had previously recorded and also keep your new recording on there as well. So it enabled you to do overdubs. Now, this is just a real simple way of doing it, and it wasn't really the best when it comes to audio quality, because each time you recorded over the top, uh, you would um, get a lot of uh, like tape hiss on there, and you would the first thing you recorded would slowly deteriorate as far as uh, volume and just quality of it. So it wasn't really like a professional recording studio in any way, but it was like a fun way to experiment, especially for uh, people like the Beatles, of course, who, you know, really their only recording experience was in Abbey Road EMI, and the engineers and George Martin and stuff would take care of all the technical aspects. So having their own home recorder enabled them to experiment a lot more um, and take the time to, to do these experiments they couldn't really do at Abbey Road uh, in the mid 60s. Of course, that would all change and the Beatles would take over and do lots of experiments. But at this time, uh, they really had to just do all of their experiments at home. And that is exactly what they did. So Paul, um, Paul purchased a house, uh, I believe it was at the end of 1965, I could be wrong, uh, but it was a house located really close to, to EMI Abbey Road Studios in St. John's Wood. And at Paul's house, uh, he had what he called a music room upstairs. This is the room where uh, him and John would write a lot of songs together. 
And in this room, he had uh, a number of these Brunel MK5 tape recorders set up. So he could um, record, uh, record just home demos and stuff like that. And there are some home demos that circulate uh, on the bootleg market. Like there's a demo of Paul recording We Can Work It Out. Um, there's uh, other things as well just circulating around of just like little instrumental bits and stuff like that. So Paul was experimenting, experimenting heavily with these machines, with making like weird sound collages, um, songwriting, home demo sessions, and all that kind of stuff. Now, of course, John Lennon also wanted to get involved in this, and so Paul went to John's house, um, which is what's called Kenwood, and John also had a music room, and there are some wonderful photos of John in this music room. I believe from this, the photos are from 1967. But in the background, you can see John's Brunel MK5 tape machines up against of the wall. And he has, it looks like he has at least two, maybe three even, along with some other reel-to-reel -reel type recording uh, machines as well. But uh, Paul helped John set these up. He showed him kind of how to, how to use them. And John made a bunch of recordings on these machines. And there are a lot of bootlegs out there of John's um, home recordings. In fact, famously, of course, John and Yoko would go on to uh, record their Two Versions album on these very machines in this very room in John's house in Kenwood. So John really, uh, really took to these machines and took the, to their experimental nature and made a lot of recordings. Besides Two Virgins, he also made a bunch of demos there, like the demo for She Said, She Said that is available on the Revolver uh, Super Deluxe box set. Uh, this happens to not be that. This is uh, the mono, 2014 mono remaster. But on the box set, there's She Said, She Said. There's also the Yellow Submarine work tape. Now, while I can't confirm that both those recordings um, were recorded on the Brunel MK5, I'm pretty certain that they were because th this would have been the best recording, uh, home recording uh, machine that John had at his disposal. And it makes sense that that's what he would use to record uh, these demos. So these machines were just super valuable to uh, Paul and John during this time period of 65, 66. And when it came time for the Beatles to start recording uh, their new album, which was going to be Revolver, uh, and this is 1966, the very first song that they worked on was Tomorrow Never Knows. And of course, uh, they also, uh, for Revolver, had a brand new engineer, Jeff Emmerich, who uh, they would go on to, ha to have a fantastic working relationship with. He would work on Revolver, Sgt. Pepper, Master Mystery Tour, some of the White Album. And then uh, during the White Album, he, he stepped away from the whole Beatles uh, thing for a while. And then he came back for Abbey Road. So they had a great working relationship, and it was really important that Jeff Emmerich was involved for Revolver, especially for Tomorrow Never Knows, because he was young. I think he was only 20 years old um, when Revolver started recording, and he was ambitious and was willing to experiment along with the Beatles. So when um, I think it was Paul who had the idea to uh, use tape loops for Tomorrow Never Knows, Jeff Emmerich was totally on board with making that happen. So. The tape loops themselves, there's a little bit of, um, I wouldn't say controversy, but there's different information out there as to exactly who made the tape loops. I've heard two different stories. The first, the one story that seems to be the story that um, is in the book, the Beatles book that uh, the new, from the Revolver uh, Super Deluxe box set, it seems that they're saying that Paul was the one who made all the tape loops and brought them in and that's that's what they did. Of course, all the Beatles are on board with it. Um, but then there's also, in the Beatles anthology book, George talks about how he recorded like a grandfather clock. That was his, his the thing that he brought in. Uh, and I think he also maybe recorded like some sitar as well, but um, like slowed down. But so George says that he recorded some tape loops as well. And then George also says that they were all told to go home, almost like a homework assignment, and come back with their tape loops and bring them in. So I don't really know exactly um, what the correct story is. I don't think we'll ever really know. But let's just say that all four Beatles, for some reason it makes me, it, it seems more, more uh, entertaining to think of all four Beatles going home with this idea that they need to make some creative tape loops and then come back and use them for this song. So I can say that there are some of the tape loops on Tomorrow Never Knows are, are pretty easy to figure out what they are. So, 
famously, I think the most uh, iconic tape loop, that, at least for me, is the sound of what sounds like a seagull. But actually what this is, it's Paul McCartney, uh, it's him laughing and it's been sped up. So it sounds like a seagull. Uh, and uh, it's, I think it's definitely, definitely the most iconic of the tape loops on Tomorrow Never Knows. Uh, the other one is, uh, it's a sampling of, uh, it's a, I think it's a classical, from a classical record, and it's a B flat chord of the whole orchestra playing this B flat chord. Uh, and that is also one of the tape loops that they use throughout the song that they would bring up. Uh, and famously, Tomorrow Never Knows, of course, it just has one chord. It's in the key of C, and it just goes throughout the whole song. It's just on the key of C, droning on the key of C. A lot like Indian, uh, classical Indian music stays on just one chord and drones throughout a song. But they did incorporate this B flat tape loop chord they would bring up every once in a while that did give the song um, kind of a bit of a, a lift, I suppose. So it does, it does go between two chords with this B flat tape loop that's been brought up. Um, and of course, other tape loops within the song, there's like backwards guitar uh, and uh, just various sound effects and like pianos and stuff like that. So there's a ton of tape loops and it would be really hard to figure out exactly what each one of these tape loops is unless you had the actual uh, master tape to work from, uh, to figure out, to solo the, the tape loops and figure out exactly what each part was. So. The tape loops on Tomorrow Never Knows uh, were created with these Brunel MK5 recording machines that, that John and Paul definitely had, and I think George had, and probably Ringo as well. So I think, uh, for me at least, it was fascinating to research these tape machines because, first of all, they look really cool. They have that total 60s, almost like James Bond spy thing going for them. Uh, and imagining uh, Paul in his house and John in his house recording these tape loops uh, and just experimenting and just having that freedom to experiment uh, it just it really makes me happy knowing that they had these machines uh, and that they put them to such great use uh, on a song like Tomorrow Never Knows so I hope you enjoyed this video uh, and uh, hopefully it gave you some information maybe you had never heard before maybe you for the first time ever got to see what the Brunel MK5 tape machine uh, looks like because honestly I didn't know what it looked like until I looked it up so it was fun for me to do the research and uh, that's it for now so I'd love to know in the comments below uh, if you have any uh, anything to add to this topic about the tape loops from Tomorrow Never Knows I'd love to hear uh, if you have a nice bit of information to add in the comments below always love, love that if you have a question maybe I can answer it maybe not who knows but I would definitely try my best so uh, more videos to come. Hope you're all doing well. Take care and bye for now.